Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me. Every one of us have a place of desperation in the pit of our stomach. In that place where we know if God don't intervene, if God doesn't move, I don't know exactly what is going to happen. Something within us that cries out to God. But here's what I know. In our weakness, we choose to stay on the side of the road. In our weakness, we stay on the outskirts of our miracle. In our weakness, we stay hidden in our blind spot. In our weakness, we stay in our place of failure. We stay in our place of hurt. Too hurt to get up again. To the, I failed too many times to get back up again. In needing of a miracle for so long that I just don't know that I have the energy. I don't know I have the strength for it anymore. And for the rest of my life, we are living on the side of the road, hanging out, thinking, I wish things would be better. I wish things could get better. But due to our embarrassment or our fear or whatever it is that's causing us to remain on the side of the road, we find ourselves ending up begging for contributions, asking and begging and pleading to get along with this life. And those people here man, that throw things into our cup when we're begging for contributions, sometimes the things they throw to us hold no value of them of anything. What they're giving us is nothing but a leftover. What they're giving us is seconds for what they have. Listen, it's their seconds they're giving you. It's their rubbish that's discarded that they want to throw into your cup. And not only do you now have to deal with what you already are dealing with, now you're dealing with all their leftover stuff, all that rubbish, and all the junk that they had to deal with. They're trying to put that on you too. Now you've got more to deal with. I'm going to keep shoving the door. <laughs> when you live off of other people's rubbish, because you won't get off the side of the road, you're still trapped in your hurt, trapped in your pain. Tra I'm not saying it's not real, but you're trapped there. You're stuck there, and you're living off of pity. Come over here and have some pity for me. And you know keep pitiful people when you see them. Because every time you see them, you're pitiful. Everything that comes out of their mouth is yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Living in the pain of yesterday. And I'm not saying it's not real. But I'm telling you, when you live off of people's seconds and their rubbish and their trash and their litter, you end up dealing with a whole bunch more of stuff that God never intended for you to deal with. Dealing with people's broke down dysfunction. I'm telling you here in church, there's some people that do not want to do better. They will not do better, but they want to get in your boat and get in your ship. And they want to bring you down like Jonah, who got in a boat with people he did not know. He didn't even care where they were going as long as it wasn't towards God's will. And those people lost everything they had. And some of you got a joke in your boat that you want to tell you you got to go. You know that. And when you live off the leftovers and the discard of other people, these people that discard their worthless items in your cup, it appears that they might be your friends. But in actuality, here's what it is. They're actually giving you false love. They're giving you false promises. They're giving you false dreams. They're giving you, they're really phony friends is what they are. They're only the people, listen, there are some people that only want to be around you because they know you will provide for them and that you will give to them. And they'll just take and take and take until you are drained and have nothing left. Listen, I want you to know sometimes the cup that you're drinking from can become bitter. Jesus drank from a bitter cup. Come on, somebody. It was a bitter cup because it was the cup of sin. Whose sin was it? It was my sin. It was your sin. It was our sin he drank from. And in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus asked the Father, he said, please, would you remove this cup? I know what my I know the price that I must pay. I know the torment. I know the pain that's coming. It will be horrific. But he said, not my will, but your will be done, God. I want your will to be done. 